Everyone, I just got back from LA. I spent six days shooting a TV reality series called The Next Crypto Gem. This is the first time I shot in a studio with lights, with $100,000 cameras, with a film crew, and with others, other judges, other contestants. In this video, I wanna share with you some of the things I've learned, specifically five things that I took away from the experience. Let's get started. The first thing I wanna talk about is how much work and dedication and crew goes into shooting a TV series. Now, at home, when I'm in front of the camera on YouTube, it's just me. I have one camera and one microphone, and that's pretty much it. Yes, I do have a few lights, and yes, I do make sure the room is quiet, but there isn't a team of 20 or 30 people that's checking out the sound, the sound quality, you know, the mic setup, right? Some people with a boom mic, also people that are taking care of the lights that are on the ceiling, right? The background, the decor, and of course the producers, there's a lot of them. There's a main one, and then there's a secondary main one, and then a third one, and then plus you have the camera crew. They have specific motions, uh, their own terminology, whether a shot is dirty, and you have to splice and one, two, and all this uh, lingo that they, they know that I have no clue about, right? And also, the cameras they're using. Uh, they have some wide angle ones, short angle ones, right? But they're all costing like $100,000, and the quality, the depth, the field of vision is beyond anything I'm working with right now. In fact, I'm recording in front of a GoPro. It works for me, it works for you too, but not for anything that will be shown on TV and streaming services. The second thing I learned is don't judge a book by its cover. For us in crypto, that may be hard to do at times because we have seen so many projects that have rug pulled or been hacked or have gone under due to bad leadership. You just don't know sometimes. Before going into the show, I already knew there, there were a lot of contestants, right? I didn't know who would be the final contestants, but obviously as we started shooting, I knew who they, uh, who they are, right? And I got very close with them. I talked to many, and one in particular really changed my mind. And I can't say who at this point, but you guys will see when the, day, the show debuts sometime in June or July, you guys will know who I'm talking about, but this project sent two individuals, and at first glance, you just think, eh, why are these guys here? Why is this project even on this show? And after talking to them, like I was truly moved by their dedication, their passion, but also them as individuals. These guys were outstanding guys. One thing that I think is very, very important in crypto is community. Because there's a lot of projects out there. They'll promise you the moon. They will tell you this is the greatest tech ever, or it has the fastest transaction speed, or it's following some kind of consensus that's the most decentralized, and people will spew out a lot of, a lot of jargon and terms. But without a great community, it really means nothing. Number three is this. Do nice guys finish last or do they finish first? In, in business, in crypto, right? You generally think that the ruthless, the ones that have very little morals or care very little about morals or ethics, they're the ones that survive and ultimately win. And generally speaking, I would say that that is true because they're willing to do what it takes and step over people to get to the top, right? But I will say this, out of the final contestants, you had some very nice people and you had some ruthless people, I would say. I don't know if ruthless is the, the, the word, but you could definitely tell the personalities of the, these teams and their representatives uh, are very different, very, very different indeed. That's a hard thing in crypto because you have so much tribalism, and I don't like it. You know, you have guys that are attacking one project just to, you know, try to pump up their own bags. It doesn't really serve anyone. But for the context of this show, 
there were contests, um, and and these guys had to win, right? That's how you win the show, win the contest, and become the next crypto gem. The fourth takeaway is this. Um, as much as I like to think that I'm pretty good in front of a camera, I'm eloquent, and I can answer questions left and right, I was honestly completely blown away by some of these project leaders, community leaders, and just leaders from these projects. These contests that we threw at them were very difficult. They were not able to prepare. Even me as a judge, I didn't really know what to expect day to day. They were thrown, thrown <laughs> into the fire, were asked very, very difficult questions, not only from us judges, but also from these whales, guest stars that came on later on. And man, they had very little time to answer, but after hearing some of these guys talk, I could tell they're very, very smart. Um, they have that drive, the fire behind them. And that's why I was so amazed because they really handled themselves well. Not to say that they weren't nervous, but these projects all handled themselves very, very well. A few hiccups here or there, and you'll see that when the show debuts. But ultimately, the top projects at the end they were fantastic. And number five, and this is just for me, and it's really outside the, the show, but while filming, I had a lot of opportunities to talk to my other judges, Leia and Brian. And you can look them up. They're both pretty influential and famous within the space. And I'd like to share a little bit about our interactions and basically my overall thoughts about them. Leia is a beautiful, beautiful person. She is not only beautiful, but intelligent. She's very eloquent. That British accent um, fit her very well. She definitely stood out. She dressed really well, and she spoke even better. She asked a lot of hard questions, and overall, she is a very intelligent and fun person to be around. Now, as for Brian, he is someone that's totally unknown to me. I heard of Leia before and some of her hot and controversial takes, but as for Brian, I really had no clue. Didn't know what to expect, but it turned out Brian is a very nice guy, very intelligent guy. We had moments where we were just so synced up on the show, and also he's a very well-connected guy, and that made me realize that I should have done a lot more building these relationships and connections. There's a whole world out there I feel like I've missed, being a VC or being an advisor and, and just staying well connected with others in this space. And that is something that I want to change and something that I definitely want to look into. Those are my five takeaways after filming for a week in LA for the next Crypto Gem. I can't wait until you guys see the show. I can't wait. I until I see the show because, again, a lot of moving parts, a lot of people, a lot of cuts, everything going on, I think the show will blow people away. I think the crypto space definitely needs a show like this. It's a cross between The Apprentice and The Voice and Shark Tank all together and it will be televised globally. There's more distribution rights coming up it seems like every week. Right now, it's on Bespoke TV, also Inside TV, and it's expanding to Amazon Prime, I think in Europe, but may expand in the US. There are talks with Netflix, and who knows where else it will be distributed. But stay tuned for that, June and July, and I mentioned at the beginning, season two is already being talked about, and I think once people watch season one and be blown away by it, season two will be much much better. There will be even more contestants, more projects. All right, guys, smash it a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.